you probably heard that Tesla is the first new American car company since Ford. More accurately, they were the first new car company to hold an IPO or initial public offering and become a publicly traded company. However, there are a handful of new upstarts, dreamers that have set out to disrupt the automotive industry with their own unique visions. One such upstart is Elio Motors, founded by Paul Elio in 2009. They're headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona, and their unique vision was a consequence of the times in which they were founded. In 2009, Tesla was only making a $100,000 roadster, and it was hard to see electric vehicles as anything but playthings for the wealthy. Their vision was simple, build a tiny, fuel-efficient, affordable vehicle that would be perfect for commuters. According to energy.gov, the number of drivers who commute alone to work have been on the rise, and by 2014, that number was 76%. People love their big trucks, SUVs, and sedans, and for good reason. But what if there was a low-cost commuter car that people could add to their stable? Enter the Elio Motors E1, a three-wheel, two-seater in tandem, one-door auto cycle. The premise is straightforward. Build a smaller car with less stuff that weighs less, costs less, and has a small engine and incredible fuel efficiency. The Elio E1 weighs just 1,350 pounds, has a target price under $7,500, and achieves 84 miles per gallon on the freeway and 49 miles per gallon in the city. To put this in perspective, the next cheapest car you can buy in the United States is the Nissan Versa that starts at $13,200 for a standard transmission or $15,300 for an automatic. The Versa weighs 2,400 pounds and gets 31 miles per gallon in the city and 39 on the highway. So the Elio E1 weighs half as much, cost half as much, and has double the fuel efficiency. In 2009, when the E1 was first introduced, this was a very appealing value proposition. Electric vehicles were still years away, and for many, the Elio E1 was a bridge car, something to bridge the divide between old gasoline cars and future EVs. In 2009, it was hard to imagine that Tesla would be making 5,000 Model 3s a week. After all, they only sold a total of 2,500 Roadsters in its entire production run. However, like Tesla, Paul Elio had a similar goal to reduce vehicle emissions and lower our carbon footprint, and wanted to bring manufacturing back to the United States. Elio would produce their cars at the old, shuttered GM plant in Shreveport, Louisiana. Understandably, the residents of Shreveport were thrilled at the prospect of thousands of new jobs. To fully understand how big a game changer the Elio E1 would be, Let's compare it to some of the vehicles we reviewed in our Is Tesla Actually Worse for the Environment video. We developed a model to approximate CO2 equivalent emissions to manufacture a vehicle based on its curb weight. Using this model, the 1350 pound E1 has a carbon footprint of 4.8 metric tons of CO2e on day one. In comparison, the much more complicated and hefty Tesla Model 3 starts at 22 tons and a Toyota Prius starts at 12.5 metric tons. If we estimate a combined fuel economy figure of 65 miles per gallon for the Elio, we see that it would take a Model 3 powered by the California grid 15 years to beat the Elio. That means buying an Elio E1 is about as good as it gets if you're looking to lower your carbon footprint. They even devised a clever way for customers to pay for the car. Qualifying buyers could apply for a credit line and credit card. This card was solely for pumping gasoline, and an extra fee would be applied to pay down the loan. Since your gas savings could easily be three times that of an average car, the consumer would feel like they were paying what they always paid for a fill-up while making a car payment. The most notable design characteristics are obviously the teardrop shape and the external front wheels housed in a fairing. If the thought of a three-wheeler is making you nervous, you're probably thinking of something like the Reliant Robin. The Robin was notorious for terrible stability and the ease with which it would tip over. Turns out having two wheels in the front and one in the back is a much more stable configuration. Elio probably doesn't have to complete the same crash test as a car, with its motorcycle distinction, but it does claim to be very safe. It features three airbags, a unibody construction, anti-lock brakes, and a self-claimed larger crumple zone than other similar vehicles. It has a 55 horsepower engine capable of doing 0-60 to 60 in about 11 seconds. It gets even better fuel economy than motorcycles due to its enclosed design taking the driver out of the airstream. It's not exactly fast, but you can't deny you draw attention wherever you went. So, at half the price of the next cheapest new car available, and emissions lower than anything else out there, the Elio E1 sounds like a pretty solid car. 
However, as you've probably noticed, unlike Tesla, there aren't any Elios on the road today. So what happened? To understand the treacherous journey of Elio Motors, we need to consider some of the different challenges they faced. First of all, it's really difficult to manufacture cars. We see companies like Toyota producing over 10 million cars a year and tend to lose sight on just how difficult it can be. There are all sorts of new startups these days like Faraday Futures and Lucid Motors, and they've all been met with the same realization. Manufacturing automobiles doesn't just require millions of dollars, it requires hundreds of millions. Production plans need to be procured, crash tests have to be performed, safety certifications have to be acquired, and assembly line logistics needs to be sorted out. All of this is incredibly capital intensive, and you have to be a fundraising machine like Tesla to have any real chance of survival. The second issue was an underestimation of how difficult it is to produce a new engine from scratch. Unlike EVs where developing a new motor is straightforward, internal combustion engines take decades to perfect and master. Elio held a press conference in 2015, claiming to be the first new vehicle manufacturer to build an engine from the ground up in 60 years. That sounds great, but just three years later, they would announce a partnership with Roush, an engine performance company, to source their engines going forward. This deal is expected to save Elio over $120 million in research and development costs. Just imagine if they had made this realization on day one. If it were us, we'd reach out to some of the best engine makers on earth and sign a deal to procure engines from the start. If things went our way and our first model was a success, we would then discuss spending some of our revenue on developing our own engine in-house. But even then, we probably wouldn't. Take for example the Honda Brio, a tiny 1.2 liter four-cylinder car that is sold in India. Honda makes some of the best engines on earth and sourcing a small engine like this might have made all the difference for Elio. The third challenge is in shifting consumer habits and simultaneously changing regulatory standards. We're big fans of Shark Tank, and one thing the sharks always shy away from investing in is products that require shifting consumer habits. A stainless steel straw that could remove millions of plastic straws from landfills and our oceans sounds great but it is no small feat to convince people to bring their own straws when going out to restaurants. Similarly, the Elio E1 is like nothing else out on the road. People think of four wheels and side-by-side -side seating when thinking of a car. And remember, the E1 is technically classified as an auto cycle, and in most states and countries falls under the same laws as a motorcycle. This means drivers would need to wear a helmet and have a special M1 motorcycle rating on their driver's license. This is a really hard sell, and it makes us wonder if the E1 wouldn't have been better served being a four-wheeled car. The Volkswagen XL1 comes to mind, a prototype hybrid diesel car with a similar concept, but two rear wheels placed very close together. If Elio had come up with something similar, it might have added a little more weight, but been a more accessible option for consumers. As it stands, Elio is in the process of having laws changed to accommodate their new class of vehicle. The problem is, is there's not a pool of money that invests in these types of projects, right? You have the venture capital world, they like to do 500000 to $5 million on startups without revenues, and they're comfortable with that. Then you have private equity guys who are comfortable with this many zeros, but they want to see revenues. So it's very rare that a startup needs this kind of cash to, to, to first uh, sale. And so because it doesn't happen that often, there's not a, a, a structure in place, and that's, that's really what makes it hard. But the story of Elio Motors doesn't end here. In 2016, Elio became the first company to sell shares on the over-the-counter markets under Title IV of the 2012 Jumpstart Our Business Startups, or JOBS Act. Under Regulation A of the JOBS Act, companies can fundraise up to $50 million from unaccredited investors. Elio Motors raised nearly $17 million in funding under the Start Engine crowdfunding platform. Elio states that they are looking to begin manufacturing in 2019. And while this date has slid every year for almost 10 years now, there may be reason to be optimistic. They ditched the notion of building their own engine, might actually have the funding needed to start manufacturing, and things might be starting to look up. But the real problem is that in the 10 years since its inception, EVs have started to gain serious ground in the industry. Is it too late for Elio? Or are they going to be able to fulfill their pre-orders and actually pull this off? Would they be better off converting the E1 to an electric car at this point? That is a story for 2019, and we wish them the best of luck. So what do you think? 
Would you consider buying an Elio E1 if they reached full-scale production? Even if they do, is it too late for Paul Elio's ambitious vision? Let us know in the comments. If you're new, we hope you'll consider subscribing, clicking the notification bell, and being a valued member of our community. Also, consider supporting us on Patreon. For all of our patrons, thank you. Your support means the world to us. We're Tuba Da Vinci. Thank you for watching.